All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I have for you guys today, I'm sure a lot of you guys were waiting for this one. The 2021 World's Strongest Man wrapped up this weekend, and your new World's Strongest Man champion for 2021 is Tom Stoltman. So I wanted to start off this video congratulating Tom on the major victory. It's got to be a very cool moment for him. I know that a lot of people this weekend were thinking that Brian Shaw was going to wind up winning and finally take that fifth title. Um, if you go over to the final leaderboard, Tom Stoltman won with 45.5 points. Brian Shaw took a close second with 42.5 points. And in third place on the podium, Maxime Boudreau with 36.5 points. And I think also worth mentioning here, the other Stoltman brother, Luke Stoltman, wound up coming in 7th place at the 2021 World's Strongest Man with 32 points. So congratulations again to Tom Stoltman on the victory at the 2021 World's Strongest Man. Very major accomplishment. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about the results of the 2021 World's Strongest Man. Do you think Brian Shaw will ever get that number 5 title that he's been chasing for so long? I mean, I do think it's noteworthy that last year in 2020, Brian Shaw took fifth place. So he did move up from fifth to second, where last year a lot of people thought he was that was it. He was out of the conversation, but he was right back in it this year. Now, let's pivot over to bodybuilding here for a second. Another big bodybuilding show that happened this past weekend in the amateur ranks of the NPC was the 2021 NPC Junior Nationals. And the overall winner in the bodybuilding category at that competition, Cole Eastvold. A lot of people were extremely impressed with the package that Cole put together, specifically um, the most muscular photos that people were sharing of Cole from this competition had a lot of people extremely impressed by the conditioning that he brought. I mean, this guy looked gnarly on stage, um, and I thought it was noteworthy of bringing up that this is amateur level competition. This is conditioning that we're seeing in the NPC. And I think it's fantastic, and I think it should be mentioned, and I think it's noteworthy. Um, this guy looked really good to me. Uh, I looked back at the NPC News Online pictures as well as the Instagram pictures that are probably filtered, and he looks like he was in really good shape. He brought a really next-level conditioning for, a, for an NPC show, and I thought it was very impressive. So shout-out to Cole Eastvold taking the overall title in bodybuilding at this year's NPC Junior Nationals. All right, now next up in the news, another thing I wanted to talk about today that I thought was pretty cool. So a guest posing this past weekend, um, I believe this was Friday or Saturday night at the Junior Nationals show, um, was Nick Walker and Sean Clarita. So this was really cool to get to see because obviously Sean Clarita was the 212 Mr. Olympia champion in 2020, the best bodybuilder in the 212 category. And Nick Walker, of course, um, a young up-and-coming bodybuilder in men's open, massive guy, um, very impressive showing at the New York Pro, which he won, um, which was his second pro show ever. So Nick's got a ton of potential, um, but seeing them pose next to each other, you really get a, a feel for how big Nick really is from a muscle mass perspective. Now, I know they both work with Matt Jansen, um, and they share a coach in that regard, but just looking at Nick next to Sean is insane because obviously... They're not, they're both not the tallest guys, but in sheer muscle mass, just how much thicker and wider Nick is than Sean Clarita. Now, granted, Sean has never been a mass monster. He wins shows off really good shape and really good conditioning. He's got a really good flow to his physique, and he was one of the most gnarly conditioned guys in the 212 Olympia last year, and that's why he won. He doesn't win off of mass alone, he wins off of that conditioning. But it's just interesting to see it put into perspective how big Nick really is next to a guy that has won an Olympia title already recently. And bear in mind here, they are both the same amount of weeks out from the Olympia because now Nick is qualified. So the next show on both their radars is the Olympia. So they're both 17 weeks out from the O. So they are both in very similar phases of where their physiques are at. And now a word from our sponsors over at Labrada Nutrition. All right, now next up in the news, guys, let's talk about Flex Lewis. This is a guy that a lot of people have been asking me about as we're getting closer and closer to the Olympia 
that competitor list, that qualified competitor list is getting longer and longer. And one name that we still haven't seen added is Flex Lewis to that list. Nor have we gotten any official confirmation that Flex is still planning on doing this year's Olympia. Now, as you guys may or may not know, last year Flex announced that he was deciding to cross over to men's open bodybuilding and he wanted to take a run at the open bodybuilding Olympia title. So he was prepping for last year's Olympia when he had that shoulder injury that prevented him from competing. Now, as far as I know, he's still planning on competing this year like he originally said. And last year, he got a special invitation, as I think he should also get one this year. Because again, he is a seven-time 212 Mr. Olympia. Um, and like in men's open bodybuilding, if you're a men's open bodybuilding Mr. Olympia, you're qualified for the men's open Olympia for life. I think Flex deserves to be qualified for the men's open Olympia for life, even though he won 212, because he's the best 212 bodybuilder ever. And he's won more Olympias than any 212 bodybuilder ever. I think that should be enough to qualify him for whichever men's open bodybuilding Olympia he wants to compete in. But anyway, as we're getting around the 17 weeks out mark from the Olympia, we see these videos of Flex Lewis uh, training hard and heavy in his new gym in Las Vegas. And he's very covered up, so it would be foolish to even try to make a comment about how his physique is looking. Um, but a lot of people have noticed that he looks like he's been training hard. And like he's getting ready for something. So maybe he is ramping up the training and getting ready to compete. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you guys want to see Flex Lewis compete at this year's Men's Open Mr. Olympia? Like I said, there hasn't really been much talk about it over the past year. Uh, but as we've gotten closer, I feel like the conversation, I've gotten a lot more messages asking me what's the deal with Flex Lewis. A lot of people want to see him compete. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, as we get closer to the Chicago Pro, Charles Griffin. We got a physique update from Charles. Um, this was a few days ago. But now that it looks like Akeem might not be doing Chicago, because we now know that Akeem is doing this Puerto Rico show here in a couple of, yeah, a couple of days. A few days, I should say. But it looks like he might not be doing Chicago. I've heard that he still is, and I've also heard that he's not. So I guess it really depends on how Akeem does in Puerto Rico. So now let's assume he doesn't do Chicago. So you've got Hunter in that lineup, and you've got Charles in that lineup, Charles Griffin. He posted these physique updates where you get a much better look at how Charles is actually looking. And he has the caption there, seven weeks out, things are starting to shape up, and then he quotes someone as saying he has a thick way. So again, just kind of proof positive that Charles is very dangerous. He's showing a very complete physique update here at seven weeks out. Um, my only criticism would probably be his legs. From the front, it looks like his upper body in like that front last spread shot and that front double bicep uh, might overwhelm his lower body a little bit, but I guess we won't know for sure until we see on stage. But all in all, Charles looking like a very dangerous competitor going into the Chicago Pro this year, and I guess we'll see. Um, like I said, I think a lot will depend on the Puerto Rico Pro outcome here in around a week. And then, of course, we've still got the questions of what show is Rolly Winkler going to jump into. Is he going to jump into Chicago? Is he going to jump into Tampa? We know for sure that he confirmed he's not doing Puerto Rico. Rolly isn't. Um, so I guess we'll see. I mean, these shows are still kind of taking shape. The Olympia qualification list is still kind of taking shape. Um, and we really don't know for sure what's going to happen at these next few shows until we get right down to it. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.